The area of today's Chicago is inhabited by the Algonquian people of Miami and Muscotan tribes. The name Chicago came from the French explorer's interpretation of a Miami, Illinois word Chicaqua or Chicaqua meaning wild garlic, which according to the French explorers grew in an abundance on the south end of Lake Michigan. The Chicago Portage, which forms a water connection from the Great Lakes to the Mississippi River system, attracted the attention of many French traders who brought the beaver trade to the Chicago area, effectively making it a strategically important area of the 17th century beaver wars. After the beaver wars, most of the Algonquin tribes were driven out of the area by the Iroquois, which in turn left the area after the non fun Treaty in the 1920s. During this time, other tribes like Ojibwes and Potawatomis tried to settle the area, but there are no signs of any permanent settlements by them. The French also tried to colonize the area, but eventually they were driven out by the Native American raids during the Fox Wars. The first Old World settler in Chicago was Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, who built a farm at the mouth of the Chicago River by the year 7. Chicago's Lakeview neighborhood is home to some of the city's most famous attractions and beautiful scenery. High-rise condo buildings live side by side with early Chicago three flats and gray stones. Single family homes and apartments can be found all along Lakeview's beautiful tree-lined streets. The neighborhood is constantly changing, bringing a regular crop of new boutiques, restaurants, retailers and cafes for every dining need. There is no lack of entertainment options in this community. First class comedy clubs, concert venues, and even blue men provide endless nights out. Both Belmont Harbor and the incredible Lakeshore Path are must sees for anyone living in Chicago. Enjoying Lake Michigan is made easy with a variety of parks and sport fields all along the lakefront. Lakeview is easily accessible via both bus and L. That's the city's elevated train system. Commute downtown or explore Chicago with a quick public transportation trip. Lakeview is a huge community and parts of the area are actually divided into several smaller neighborhoods. One of these communities is Boys Town. Filled with fun shopping and excellent nightlife, Boys Town was the first officially recognized gay district in the United States. The annual Gay Pride Parade is held in this neighborhood every year, attracting hundreds of thousands of supporters. While Boys Town is well known throughout Chicagoland, Lakeview's most famous area is Wrigleyville. Home to the Chicago Cubs since 1914, Wrigley Field is one of the most iconic images in baseball today. The stadium resides at the heart of the neighborhood as well as many of the residents. Wrigleyville nightlife is more infamous than famous, offering over 100 bars and clubs to suit any taste. For a more low-key day or night out, dozens of trendy restaurants line Southport and Lincoln Avenues. The Music Box Theater presents a constant stream of new, classic, and indie films, while I.O. hosts improv comedy shows every night of the week. Read more about this community and others on BairdWarner.com. Chicago conjures up too many stereotypes to count. You've got your hipster areas, preppy places, neighborhoods where college kids live, and of course, ghettos. It seems as if there's a neighborhood for everyone in Chicago. So the question arises, which Chicago neighborhoods are the best and which are the worst? Today, we'll use science and data to determine which Chicago hoods need a little TLC. You know, the shittiest parts of Chicago. You know, you can tell a lot about our neighborhood by how broke people are and how bad the crime is. We'll use those as our measuring sticks. So join us as we take a tour of Chicago's worst neighborhoods. Our first stop on our worst tour through Chicago starts in Chatham, a hood that's located between 79th and 93rd streets along 9094. About one in seven people in this neighborhood doesn't have a job, and homes sell for less than 150 grand each. Crime is so bad here that local business owners say the gang war is destroying their way of life. Do you think Mr. Rogers would go into this neighborhood? The answer is no. No, he wouldn't. 
Our next stop on our crummy tour through Chicago takes us to Grand Crossing, a hood with 32,000 people located between 67th and 79th. It's near the lake, but you wouldn't want to go near it. Income levels are around 31 grand and homes average about 140,000. They certainly won't be throwing any parades in Grand Crossing anytime soon, that's for sure. Continuing our journey through the worst Chicago neighborhoods, we come to West Garfield Park. To get there, head due west on Madison Street past the United Center. Here, most of the residents live at or below poverty, and you have a 1 in 20 chance of being the victim of a crime here. Would a baby go into this neighborhood alone? That's a baby. Don't listen to anything he says. The Chicago Lawn neighborhood is next on our list. It's too bad that the entire area that surrounds Marquette Park near Midway is such a bad neighborhood. This is the 8th most dangerous hood in Chicago, and homes are valued at only about 140 grand as a result. On the bright side, only 10% of the residents in Chicago lawn are out of work. That's still twice the national average, but good for the worst Chicago neighborhoods. Gage Park certainly is no walk in the park when you consider the stats. This area west of Fuller Park between 51st and 59th streets is very dangerous and poor. Families bring in about 38 k a year. But people in Gage Park are the richest of any of the other neighborhoods we're going to talk about, which puts into perspective how poor lots of areas are in Chicago. Hey yo, this video is brought to you in part by Clippers on Martin Luther King Boulevard in Riverdale. Come on and get your hair done, they do it tight and right. That's Clippers on MLK, G. Continuing our tour of the worst parts of Chicago, we stop at Fuller Park, located on both sides of 9094 between East Pershing and West Garfield. Want to play a joke on your friends? Tell them you're going to go to Fuller Park for a house party and watch their reactions. There's only about 3,000 people packed into this little hood where you might just get blown away for wearing the wrong hat. The Winslows certainly wouldn't live in Fuller Park, and you wouldn't even find the Bundys living here either. Here in the densely packed neighborhood of Auburn Gresham, about one in five people refuses to work, and just about everybody's broke. When you Google the place, it auto suggests gang activity and crime. That's not good. To get there, take a car to roughly somewhere between 75th and 91st streets. Try not to drive over anybody's lawn. Been spending most of their lives living in the gangster's paradise. Welcome to Riverdale, the most dangerous neighborhood in Chicago. This little nook in the Windy City is about halfway between downtown and Chicago Heights along I-94. If you find yourself lost, don't get off on East 130th Street. That's Riverdale. That's bad. About one in four people here doesn't work and entire families make an absurdly low 14 k a year. Riverdale kind of resembles a third world country in some blocks. Can we interest anyone in a $90,000 house in Riverdale? No? Okay then. Inglewood is a pretty notoriously horrible area in Chicago too. Home to about 30,000 people, this hood sits between Garfield and 75th Street on the west side of I-90. 44% of people here live in poverty and crime is off the charts. There were 40 murders in this neighborhood alone last year. At one point, 100,000 people lived in the Inglewood neighborhood. Now it's more like 25,000. And where's the worst neighborhood in the city of Chicago? That would be right next door in West Inglewood. This true hood has 35,000 people who live in the worst conditions in the city. It ranks in the bottom three in home values and income levels and in the top three for crime. Some Chicago neighborhoods are hard to tell apart, but you can tell when you're in West Inglewood though. They're the ones with the 40s, the pistol, a beat up car, and a pit bull. If you don't live in West Inglewood or any of the other Chicago neighborhoods we talked about, you don't have it too badly. Congratulations. 